tribal trails The Son of God, He is near He chose to walk with us These tribal trails Tribal trails, tribal trails Your name is Steinhauer. Yes. That's unfamiliar to me. Well, when I became a believer, I thought I was, I was a first, uh, how you say that, a first timer. Oh, okay. Then after a while, I thought, no, I have a, quite a heritage. Uh, my great grandfather was, was a, quite a Christian. And then I said, man, well, it was kind of blew me away. And so I said, oh, okay, well, I'm not first generation. I have, uh, I guess, uh, my grandfather must have been praying for mm -hmm. uh, all of us, uh, uh, great grandchildren to come. That's exactly what God wants to do in our families. His desire is expressed in this Psalm of the Old Testament. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, and His strength and His wonderful works that he has done, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments." Hi, I'm glad that you're doing into Tribal Trails. Today, we have the Steinhauer family, a family of three generations on our program, sharing their experience of God's faithfulness. You've heard earlier Farron talk about his Christian heritage on his father's side. But what about his mother's side of the story? Josephine Steinhauer is Farron's mother. She has gone to be with the Lord in October 2017 but her walk with God continues to have a significant impact on her children and grandchildren. In 2013, Rita visited with her in Edmonton. Josephine, tell me a little bit about your life. Where did you come from? I was born and raised in Sad Lake, Alberta. Okay. My mom died when I was born. There was five children. Okay. Grandma raised me. The other siblings went to different relatives. My grandma was a real hard-working woman. Same with grandpa. We made a living out of hunting, fishing. Oh, okay, yeah. Grandpa was very smart. Mm -hmm. Like in those days, he was a very smart man on the reserve. He went to grade six. There was no high school mm -hmm. around. Yeah. So they had to send him to Calgary mm. to finish his mm. high school. And from there, Indian Affairs hired him to oh. work for them. Yeah. They, in Saddle Lake? In Saddle Lake. Mm -hmm. And we had a little farm. We always had a garden. Life was so good because mm -hmm. everything was so perfect. Like, we had so much to eat in those hungry 30s, they call it. Yeah. There was no hungry 30s that we knew of. That's all right. Because they had rations they got for sugar, coffee, tea, flour. Mm -hmm. But the rest, Grandpa went hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. When he fished, he traded fish with the farmers yeah. for eggs, milk, uh -huh. whatever the farmers yeah. had. I guess in those days, you could say we were well off. Yes. You know, I mean, we weren't starving. Yeah. And Grandpa worked and he made hay. He mm. sold hay. He had horses, cows, mm. and pigs. Wow. So we had a real busy life. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, 
but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Grandma and Grandpa raised me with so much love, gave me the best that they could give me. Most of all, Grandma didn't speak a word of English. She just spoke Cree every Sunday, no matter how the weather was. She dropped me up in a gunny sack uh -huh. because we'd go walking through high snow, deep snow. Mm -hmm. She dropped me up and make a road ahead of me and I'd kind of hold her hand in the back and we'd go to church every Sunday like that when it was winter. And she'd read the Bible to me in Cree. Mm -hmm. As little as I was, I didn't quite understand what she was telling me, but I knew there was a God. Oh. The way she explained it to me, yeah. Somebody that was mighty mm -hmm. and had a lot of love for us. And she even told me the name of Judas Iscariot. She did. She said that, that I never forget mm -hmm. that name. She told me the story mm -hmm. about him and how Jesus went on a cross. Mm -hmm. And she said, all those pictures in church are of Jesus, how he suffered. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall plead. I need no enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. My faith has found a resting place. That resting place is found in God's love. The Bible says that God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, by faith, we can be reconciled to God through his son's death. We're no longer his enemies, but we become his children. Do you believe that? If you do, you're saved. So, give us a call because we want to pray for you and encourage you in your walk with God. When she was six or seven years old, Josephine was sick with tuberculosis. She was taken to the Charles Council Hospital in Edmonton, and she stayed there for a long time. You came out when you were 15. Yes. What did you do? I stayed home, but you know in those days, you had to get married. Is that right? Yeah. Before you put a shame on your family. Mm -hmm. That's what Grandpa said. So I, I was married off at 17. I was only 15. I come out 16, 17. I was married. Uh, Nehill? Nehill Freeman. from Saddle Lake Steinhauer. Steinhauer. Robert Steinhauer. Hmm. Well, Grandma was out that time from the hospital. She said, oh, these Steinhauers are such good people, you know. They're hard workers. He'll provide for you, he, she told me. After I got married, a year after that, I started having kids. Hmm. I had 11. 11 kids. Nine boys and two girls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is good to you. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it, how he's blessed me so much. And my husband of 12 years had a heart attack one day Aww. and he died. Aww. Left me with all these children. 27 and I was a widow. I was so lonely. It was hard. I grew to depend on this man and I grew to love him. Hmm. 
Mm. You know, because he was good to me. Yeah. He worked hard to provide for us. Yeah. He was a real good man. I don't know how many years. I left for Edmonton for the bright lights. Did you take your kids with you? I put the older kids in the Mormon home and I took the three or four to Edmonton. I had to get on welfare, of course, but then I started working. I used to answer ads in the paper for housekeeping. These people, a native counseling had started to help the native people in the city mm -hmm. with their uh, Incarcerations. Oh yeah. Okay. And the children, the moms losing their children. Yeah. So they have to try and you know help them somehow get out of the system. Mm-hmm. And this lady that I knew worked there, and I guess she told them what I was doing. And that lady said, "Come and sit with one of the ladies. They're gonna pay you." Mm. Oh. So I did. I started working for them, mm. babysitting for the ladies, yeah. with their kids helping them. Mm. Next thing you know, they hired me full time. I wasn't educated, like I yeah. told you, Yeah. but I went to AVC for a while. Oh, good. I must have taken only two semesters. My kids at home were taken off from school. Oh. So I had to quit school yeah. in order for them to go. Yeah. They're the ones needed. I did too, but yeah. I had to make sacrifice. Yeah. Sing to God, sing praise to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord and rejoice before him. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. From there, I was hired as a court worker. Would you believe oh, it? Good no for experience. You. Yeah. I was just shaking in my oh. shoes. It stood in front of the judge. Yeah. Good for you. Ah, it was so hard. Yeah. But I got the hang of it, you know. Did you? Okay, that's good for you. When I worked in there, we had these little cubicles mm -hmm. for office and. I knew I loved the Lord. I took Jesus' picture and I put it on the wall. Mm. Because there I felt different. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. I don't know, sometimes I had a lot of doubts in myself, you know, about becoming a Christian. Mm. Two ladies were walking across the road, but I knew who they were. They were friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And I called them, hey, where are you girls going? We're going to the Bible study. Mm. What? Bible study? Yeah. Is it hard? No. I said, I'm coming with you guys, okay? They said, sure. So I went to Bible study. And in that Bible study, they gave me a good news Bible. Mm -hmm. And for the first time I opened it, I could understand what I was reading. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. Were you? <laughs> I was so yeah. happy uh. that I go to a, a Bible study every week. We take the bus, oh. three of us together. Yeah. This man, he was a church builder, mm -hmm. uh, Gary Brumbelow. Okay. He was from the States, him and his wife, they had two boys. But he taught us lots about the Bible, taught us hymns. Mm -hmm. He was very inspiring to us, very good man. And there I gave my life to the Lord, hmm. 1980. And I got baptized. Mm -hmm. 
My heart is leaning on the word, the written word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name, salvation through his blood. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Then my kids start to follow. Uh -huh. Accepted the Lord, got baptized. Mm -hmm. Take them to church every Sunday, like what Grandma did for me. I take them to church. They didn't complain about it. They just came along. My grandson has his own business, Warren Simon. I raised that one too. That's all right, yeah. Yeah, Christopher. Oh, he's a good man. Very good. When he was small, come on, Chris, get up. We're going to church. Okay, Grandma. He said to me. But he didn't complain. We went to church. Just that he didn't like getting up because it was in school, you know. But now when he tells his testimony, he says to people. Oh, if it wasn't for Grandma, I wouldn't be standing up here. <laughs> Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. I was basically raised by my grandmother at a young age. Um, she took me in when I was, oh, I don't even know how young. I was probably maybe about five, six years old or something like that. Maybe a little bit older, but um, yeah, she she basically raised me up until I was about, uh, about 16 years old. While you were living with uh, your grandma, did, uh, did you hear about uh, Jesus? Yeah, actually at a young age, she, she took us to church every Sunday and um, I went with her every Sunday faithfully. You know, early in the mornings, I remember her getting us up and I'd be sleeping till whatever, nine, ten o'clock or whatever. And I remember her always waking us up, taking us to church and stuff. And so at times I didn't, I didn't want to go, but I went anyways. But I remember her piling everybody into her station wagon and mm -hmm. taking us all off to church. You know, from that time on that you were going with your grandma to church, when did God really start working in your heart to know God? I knew the basics or whatever of, of Christ and, and God. I died on the cross for our sins, and as I became a teenager, I kind of started like falling away. I started getting involved in drugs, started getting involved in alcohol and stuff like that. And so what happened in your life to change to, for you to wholeheartedly turn back to God? I basically you know, came to the point in my life where I was just at the lowest of the low. My wife, she was... We already had her boy. My boy was two years old. She was pregnant with uh, our second child. And like I said, I was in that school at that time and I couldn't find a job and rent was coming, rent was due and my, you know, my wife was gonna have our baby at any time. Mm -hmm. And so God trying to get my attention. When Chris came to the end of himself, it was time for God to act on his behalf. God did it in a mysterious way. For some reason, Chris was sick of his lifestyle. He no longer enjoyed alcohol and drugs. At the same time, his uncle, who had become a believer of Christ, invited him to church. Chris went to church to check it out. Somehow his need motivated him to pray to God. I just remember saying, oh, like, okay, God, you know what? I've had enough like this. Yeah. I've had enough. I've, I've, I've lived my life for myself and I need your help. Like, I need your help right now. Like, I got rent due, I got a baby on the way. I'm sick of living this life. I'm sick of, you know, the drugs, the alcohol. I just, just a true, like, sincere prayer. The next day, 
things started happening. So Monday, I get a call from, uh, from the, for this guy for a job. I'm like, oh, sweet, because I've been looking for a job. I couldn't find a job. I just get out of Nate's and, you know, I, I, you have it in your head that you're just, you know, you have all this education that you're going to get a job like no problem or whatever. But that wasn't the case. So I took the first job I got was like mm -hmm. a painting job. And then after that, Visa calls me and they're like, hey, we want to send you a credit card. I'm like, you don't want to send me a credit card. <laughs> this is the last person you want to send a credit card. I don't even have a job. I don't have no income or whatever. You don't, you don't, you don't want to send me a credit card. <laughs> so they're like, no, we want, to, we want to send you a credit card and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So... I don't know if that was a blessing or a curse, but <laughs> anyways, I needed the money at the time. Everything kind of seemed to work out. And so I just told God, I'm like, you know what? You've done so much. Like, you've done so much for me. I'm just going to recommit my life. Like, I just yeah. recommit my life to you. Like, from this day on, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop smoking weed. I'm going to stop doing all these drugs and stuff like that. I'm going to stop living with this crazy lifestyle. That was May 2003, so about 10 years now yeah. since, that, since that day. And Enough for me that Jesus saves, this ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I came to him, he'll never cast me. Is uh, Farron your son? Yes. Tell me a little bit about him. Oh, Farron, uh, he was a young man, and when we were going to the church here in Edmonton with Brumbolo, mm -hmm. because he was into drinking, mm -hmm. smoking sm cigarettes, mm -hmm. when he accepted the Lord, the Lord convicted him about his smoking. So he had to quit. He mm. took pass that away. Mm -hmm. He's a carpenter. Oh, okay. And he's got tickets for inspection houses. Oh, he so does. Well educated, yeah. Yeah. He's a good worker. Yeah. His wife calls him perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has to be just so. Oh. When he goes in the house, he can look up there and he knows where the problem is. <laughs> He's a good man. I love yeah. my son so dearly. Yeah. Fern was one of the older children that Josephine had put into foster care. As he grew older, Fern wanted to look for his identity. So he returned to his home reserve and reconnected with the relatives of his father and mother. He even got involved in cultural practices there. But through it all, he still didn't find peace. So Fern went back to Edmonton. He quit drinking, but continued to use drugs. It was in a drug overdose God spoke to him. From that moment, when I OD'd, something I've seen in what happened to me uh, had me thinking. Scared you? Scared me, but I didn't have time to really reflect until a couple of months later when I was doing drugs, I had some flashbacks, and I, it scared me, and I didn't know what was happening. At that time, I didn't realize uh, my mother, she was part of this uh, Christian thing, and they were praying. Mm. And I guess she was, not only her, but uh, her prayer meeting uh, Bible study group was were praying for, uh, for us and for other children, for other children of the congregation that she was involved with. I do believe in the power of prayer, because not only that, it was me, my sister, and my other younger brother that more or less within a six-month period, uh, the Lord basically uh, worked on our hearts and, and uh, revealed himself to each one of us. How can God reveal himself to you? Well, when I OD'd there, I said something, a vision, like something happened. What I seen scared me. And so within that time, I was having flashbacks, and I could not shake it. 
And so there was this missionary. His name was Gary Brumblow. He was with uh, Interact okay. or, or Arctic Missions at that time. And so I was talking to him, and you know, I, I, I was I thought I was going crazy. So I got I said this. So I, I finally had the courage enough to share with him what I went through, and I and what I went through. He opened up the Bible, mm -hmm. God's Word, and he revealed everything that I said to him was in, in God's Word. And it just, mm. man, it just overwhelmed me. And then when I accepted the Lord into my life, like you, you, you said earlier, did I find peace? This peace, it's like that. I thought that round peg, rather than finding a square hole, found a round hole. And everything just made sense to me. That's what it's supposed to be when you and I put our faith in Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul said that by Christ, God reconciled all things to himself. Whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh, through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Wow, that's good news. Like our guest, you might have tried other ways of looking for peace, but ended up with nothing. I encourage you to try Christ. Faith in him is the only way to have peace with God. If you have questions or need help, call us. There was a time my life was just a puzzle In the search had led nowhere for me A restless soul was lost in sin and struggle And I met Jesus I found that missing peace I found a peace That the world could never offer A change of darkness Gave way to sweet release He filled a part of my heart that stood so empty oh, When I met Jesus I found that missing peace There was a time My life was not worth living I couldn't calm the storms inside of me but now i rest i know i've been forgiven thank god for jesus he's the missing 